Jim, great forecast end of the week because two of the Syracuse City pools are going to be opening Wednesday, Kirk Park and Schiller Park pools. Let's talk a little bit about that and some of the other things happening in the city. He is a busy guy. We're catching him in between meetings. The mayor of Syracuse, Ben Walsh, is with us live. Thanks for joining us tonight, Mayor. Happy to be back with you, Jeff. Well, let's talk about some of those positive things. Pools opening. You talked today at your briefing about some of the road construction, paving, slurry sealing, lots of roads this summer. I mean, we got to have these kinds of things, these positive things going forward here, despite all that's going on around us. We do. I'm, I'm in my car now, so I, I appreciate uh, the condition of our roads. And, um, you know, it's something I hear a lot about. And while uh, the, the pandemic has certainly taken a, a financial toll on the city, uh, we still need to move forward. We still need to make investments. And that's what we're doing. We, uh, we talked about a $9.7 million project to uh, mill and pave uh, both South Salina Street and South State Street from Martin Luther King Boulevard uh, on the south side all the way through downtown up into the north side where the two streets converge. We also talked about uh, a number of other uh, nine miles of streets uh, that DPW is going to be paving uh, over the summer, uh, as well as 45 miles of streets that are going to be resurfaced uh, or slurry sealed, as we call it. Um, so uh, all really important investments, and uh, we're, we're excited about them. Talking about investment, investing in youth. You talked about a summer jobs program for 14 to 20 year olds. How's that going to work this summer? Well, we were really concerned we weren't going to be able to do it this year, uh, given the constraints in the in the work environment. But it's a it's a critical piece of our strategy uh, to ensure that we that uh, we make sure that uh, everyone in our community is having access to economic opportunity. And we know summer jobs, internships provide that foundation uh, that that young people can build upon. So we had uh, at the last minute we had our state funding come through in partnership with the county, uh, and uh, that's going to allow us to bring uh, to hire 450 young people people throughout the community. And uh, the good news is we have the funding. Uh, we have uh, the young people. Uh, but where we need to work uh, right now is uh, employers that can accommodate uh, these uh, these summer youth uh, uh, in their uh, in their offices, in their uh, environments. And some of it can be remote. So if you run a business, if you know somebody that runs a business that could use some uh, young people uh, helping out this summer, uh, go on to cnyworks.com. They're our workforce development partner, and, uh, and and you can help get some of our young people to work. And they really need that right now. It's been tough. This pandemic's been tough on everyone. Let's change topics a little bit. Columbus Circle, uh, you expect to have your action group all set by next week. Uh, does this mean the statue's automatically coming down? I mean, you've been pretty clear through all of this that something has to change down there. Yeah, the, it, in my opinion, the status quo down there is unacceptable. But while I am the mayor, I don't think it's appropriate for me uh, to predetermine that outcome. We started a process two years ago of having dialogue circles. Those were productive. I think they generated some common understanding. Uh, now is the time for action. So we're uh, we're uh, establishing a committee that we'll announce next week. It'll involve representatives from uh, Onondaga Nation, from the Italian American community, from a, n a number of other constituencies, and we will come up with a plan for that uh, that space and that will uh, involve what we do with that statute. Uh, let's talk police reform. 40th day of some style of protest from last chance for change. How would you rate what the city has done so far? And also there's been some talk about um, calling for a residency requirement for police. Is that maybe not as easy as it sounds? Well, uh, residency for uh, all city employees, including police, uh, is a priority. We are able to do it for a number of uh, different positions, but we are limited in, by state law in enforcing residency for our police officers. That's why we negotiated it as part of our contract with the with the with the police union, which ultimately uh, was voted down by the common council. But residency for the first five years on the job was in there, so we share that priority uh, with uh, with the different protest organizations. I've I've said I'm really proud of the progress that we've made on police reform and police accountability over the past two and a half years. But what we've heard from many of the the protesters and the organizers is it's not enough and it's not fast enough. So we're going to accept that challenge, use this moment uh, to try to accelerate some of those changes that are in the best interest uh, of the community and our officers. All right, I'm going to get last one in for you, and I know you got to go to another meeting, but the city's been singled out for a couple of great initiatives within the last day or two, one with Bloomberg uh, Philanthropies, the other with the state, uh, Empire State Development, using data, smart cities, which you have really built uh, your administration on to solve problems. Talk a little bit about those and what they mean and how they would work here. 
Yeah, everything from the summer youth employment uh, to our uh, Syracuse Surge strategy, it's all based on being competitive in the new economy and making sure that we're creating opportunities for people. Uh, so um, we, were, we were awarded honor roll status from What Works Cities for our work in uh, ensuring a data-driven decision-making in, in City Hall. And we were awarded a $200,000 grant from New York State uh, to do more smart city initiatives, vacant property monitoring, algae bloom monitoring out at Skinny Alice. And that's, again, all part of our uh, overall Syracuse surge strategy to make sure we have inclusive economic growth in the new economy. And that uh, algal bloom monitoring involves something that we've gotten really good at here. It involves drones, right? Yeah, we're, we're leveraging the investments that we've made as a region now over the past decade. We are seen as a leader in unmanned aerial systems technology. We're seen as a leader in smart cities technology. So it's really a no brainer that we would leverage those uh, those opportunities to address the issues that we're dealing with today. Again, whether it be vacant properties or algae blooms, uh, these are these are challenges that we're facing, uh, but we have some uh, some new resources and new technology to help us address them. Mayor Ben Walsh, I know you're in between meetings, so we're so thankful that you were able to uh, pull over. He wasn't driving everybody. I think you could see that was pretty What's obvious. That? But uh, but thank you so much for carving out a few minutes to talk about these really important things. Really appreciate it. Sure thing, Jeff. Thanks. Stay with us. We'll be right back.